bit of a tour of the gardens around our house. You've seen our berry garden, you've seen a bit of our herb garden, which is by our house, you've seen our vegetable garden, but you haven't really seen around our house. So we have this beautiful deck, which was kind of neglected and not looking so great. So this morning at like seven o'clock, I decided that I was gonna make it tidier and prettier so that I actually enjoyed coming out here and it wasn't just like, ugh, it's not fun out there. So that's our living room in there. We just tuck the barbecue there, we pull it up when we use it. But that's my lovely laundry line. Our beautiful picnic table. So I moved, I planted out some flowers. We had some starts that the kids had picked out at the nursery that hadn't been planted out yet. This one uh, needed water badly, so it was a little neglected. But um, I just popped them in a couple pots that I had in the greenhouse. I put this candle holder here. I think the candle really needs to be replaced, but these were just things that were left here by the sellers of our house when we bought it last year. So then I moved some seating over here. Nice mismatched patio furniture. But, fun fact, I built this. Oh yes I did. When I was 14 or 15, I built one for my grandma and one for my mom for Mother's Day. So my grandma recently de downsized from her massive beautiful house on the ocean to a condo because she's just about 80. She decided she wanted to downsize. She's actually here visiting this week and I, she's going to help me with some garden planning stuff because she's so good at that. Anyhow, they came up with a U-Haul last year with all sorts of stuff and in it was this Adirondack bench. They also brought this picnic table that Marius built. and. Um, I'm really happy to have a picnic table on our deck. Mary's had built this for my grandma. He built two matching ones for at the beach at her house. So my mom has one and we have one now. And the gardens, I mean our yard is still chaos, but the gardens that I'm gonna give you tours of today are, there's raised beds there, there, what the greenhouse looks like right now, what our fruit trees are looking like right now, plus some flower beds. Oh, also, the deck wraps around here. And I put a few starts in this hanging basket. This is my kitchen window right there. So now I see this. But first I'm going to make breakfast and then I'm going to show you the garden. So I'm outside working on watering my house garden and I thought I would show you like the kitchen garden I call this I guess. I don't know, the house garden. I thought I'd show you what I have going on here. My kids are inside. Some of them are doing chores. Mac has the baby because he wanted to have the baby. He's very into babysitting. That's cool by me. Let's see if we can get this right angle here. Okay, so this is my greenhouse. I didn't use it much this year. My sisters used it because I knew with having a baby in April, which is when you're planting in a greenhouse here, I wasn't going to get to it. So she's been using it and that's terrific and I'm going to show you what's inside there but first I'm going to show you outside beds. It's windy and I'm sorry for that but not really sorry, it's just how it is. That's the house there. So this is our water tank that we use to water the greenhouse and the surrounding. I just direct seeded some different melons in here. Catania. Early Moonbeam and Farthest, Farthest North Gala. I also planted a few of these calendula that are known for their high resin, so medicinally really terrific. So I planted them in here within the hay, have them all tagged. Um, this is a sour cherry tree, so something I'm doing different this year is I'm watering all my fruit trees and so far they're doing a lot better whether it's just because it's a different year or because they're getting watered or because they were pruned i don't know but my in-laws swear by watering their fruit trees even their mature ones here they say they get a lot better harvest because we have such a short season you need to help your fruit however you can so i'm trying watering them i just put the hose on them from the tank for like five minutes at a time into the greenhouse we keep talking about, but haven't yet built a bed down the center. But we've got tomatoes and marigolds going on. There's more tomato plants to go in up at Anna's. Basil to go in here somewhere. Tomato plants I'm going to put out. I just potted up this flower that one of the kids bought to put. 
near the house somewhere. Some more starts, hot peppers, marigolds, lettuce, all those fun things. This was like you could barely walk in here. There was so many flats of things. So over here, this is our fire pit here. This bed, I have purposefully put a pile of things here that all need to be protected in winter so that I can just cover the whole bed with straw and not have to be all over the place. So I've got these cherry trees, which I just about killed last year, but they came back. They're a bush that's really cold hardy. This is Juliet and that's Romeo. I've got asparagus, a few pots of that. Um, and then I've got different herds, uh, herbs. I've, this is weeding in here is for one of my jobs today, but this was my window of time when I could do this for you because the hose is running on different fruit trees. I've got a bunch of types of mint, a couple types of oregano, tarragon, thyme, loads of chives. I've already picked and dried a bunch of chives. And it's all, this stuff over here is what I picked and it's already coming back. I'm gonna get a second cutting from it for sure. This is a transparent apple tree. Last year I got no apples from it. So I'm hoping watering it might help. They all dropped off last year and there's little baby apples. This is another sour cherry tree. Between this one and that one I showed you over there last year, I got only like a quart of sour cherries. So I'm hoping I get more this year. These beds started off as the kids garden beds, but then they uh, weren't really taking care of them. And then frost killed a bunch of their starts. So there's still a couple things like a strawberry and a Cosmo, but mostly I've planted them all in carrots now. So in here, these are, um, what are they called? I wrote it on the end here. Make them hybrid. They're a quick growing smaller carrot that'll be good for um, snacking. My goal, so I planted these Sunday. My goal is that next week, I'm going to flame weed these beds because carrots take so long to come up. This one, the whole bed is Bolero which is a good storage carrot. This row I caught on and decided to mark every row with a popsicle stick so I didn't have to water the whole bed. What I did though, because I didn't mark these rows, I went back and kind of estimated where the rows were and threw some lettuce seeds in between so at least I'm watering something. And now this one is Max and it has more than the other kids does. It does have some carrots. These were a baby finger carrot, but I planted a few rows here of called fly away that's supposed to be carrot rust fly they don't like it uh, a few rows of the baby finger and then a pile of scarlet nantes so the reason I'm planting carrots here and not in my vegetable garden is because apparently here the way you outsmart the carrot rust fly is that you plant them in raised beds or you cover them in shade cloth so I had these raised beds and I thought Okay, this house doesn't reach there apparently. Or I'm caught on something. Hmm. I think I'm caught on something. Yes, I am. So, I put them in the raised bed so that I could try and outsmart the carrot rust fly. Now, this apple tree over here that I was show trying to show you is a honey crisp. And I also got no apples off of this last year. We do have baby apples coming on. Last year they just dropped them all. I don't know why. I should have asked my mom because my mom is nerdy about apple trees. But um, I'm hoping that watering them will help. The trick with fruit trees, what I've learned from my mom, is you don't want to do small waterings every day because that encourages shallow roots. It's better to do a deep watering like once or twice a week. So. That's what I've been trying to do is just, they get five minutes, which is about a five gallon bucket full, which is what my mom aims to do. They give their fruit trees all a five gallon bucket once a week. So I'm doing it once or twice a week, depends on when I remember. Now, while this is, that Honeycrisp is watering, I'm going to show you over here. I've got a couple flower beds that were just here when we bought the house. So I've tried to kind of maintain them a bit. I weed whacked around them so that they're prettier and I've been weeding them a couple times. This is yarrow, this is just wild, but it's pretty, so I left it there. Lots of Icelandic poppies. These are an oriental poppy. 
you can kind of hmm. we're not going to walk over there but you can see another flower bed there that's got a whole pile of Icelandic poppies a rose bush tulips irises and a bunch of lovage it looks really pretty so lots of these this bush bloomed and had pretty berries in about April I hmm, wonder what that is that's a peony oh there's a peony in the other one too and then over here we have an ornamental cherry this big tree is a mayflower then there's an ornamental cherry with the red leaves and then there's this apple tree that this is the only apple tree we got apples off of last year this one I don't have the ability to water well, I could just pack a five gallon bucket over here I might do that but I love this one because when you enter to our house and my mom pruned it nicely so it just is so lovely and you walk in this to get to our house and then the last thing that I just planted like literally 10 minutes ago was I filled in these I didn't do these last year and I don't know why I didn't do these last year but I just kind of went into the greenhouse and grabbed some random starts that I had I have marigolds, basil, a bit of sage. The highway noise is really loud right now. Sorry about that. Um, I don't even know what that one is called. But I just fill them in so that right by our door there's some pretty flowers. I'm hoping to kind of do a running, at least every month, show you what's going on in the garden. Um, just because for interest for people who are wondering what it's like to grow in a cold season in a short season we're like a zone two three so our last frost date is early june and then we are like september or october so we don't have a really long season and you got to be creative with it i'm really fortunate to have my sister for help because she is so knowledgeable about short season gardening here and she's such a good resource for me